All right, so let's do an example for a moment of inertia. We're gonna find the moment of inertia about the y-axis for a solid in the first octant bounded by the cylinder x squared plus z squared equals one. So that runs down the y-axis. And the plane y equals x, so that's diagonally cutting through the first octant. And y equals zero, the xz plane, and z equals zero, the xy plane, with some density to z. Okay. So as usual, first thing to do is to get friendly with our region. What does this thing look like? So do a little sketch and figure out how to um, set up this domain. Okay, so there's our Y and our Z axis and our X axis. And then we go, let's see. So we have now the cylinder coming down, actually that's terrible, cylinder that's coming down the uh, around the y-axis headed this way and I can so there's our cylinder and then we are going to be cutting it with uh, the plane y equals x so it's going to be coming out diagonally this way and so it's going to be chopping it like that so we've got some plane kind of slicing through here hopefully that gives you some kind of idea what it looks like and <clears throat> then you also notice that that we've got as one of our bounds y equals zero so that indicates that the portion that we're looking at is going to be this part of the solid over here so if I were to, let me redraw this. Now that I can see what we're, we're looking at here, let me rotate this around so that I've got like uh, X going this way and um, maybe Y going this way. And we can see that this is gonna have some like quarter circle coming through here. And then it's gonna be uh, going out to here there we go so it's the back wall is going to be this part right here <clears throat> and the front wall is going to be this part right here and then the side wall is going to be this curved part on the outside of the cylinder okay now I have a pretty good visualization of what this thing looks like so let's go ahead and set up the computation for the moment of inertia Let's see so um i think that i might as well do the uh, z or dy integration first um that just seems sort of the the simpler one to me um so when we're done doing that dy integration, we'll have to set up the integral over this uh, flat semi quarter circular region that, that you would see if, if you were uh, standing here and looking backward that way, right? You would see this would make a shadow just covering that portion right there. Okay, so let's see. So, <clears throat> um, so we're going to start at uh, the, what is that? That's, that's y equals zero on the left, the back plane. And then we're going to exit when we go through this uh, slanted plane right here, which is where y is equal to x. So that gives us the bounds of zero to x for our innermost integral. And then this is going to be, uh, let's see, x squared plus z squared for the moment. Um, <clears throat> and then times the density of 2z and then dy. Okay, now we have to figure out what to do for that um, quarter circle in the xz plane. And I would say probably polar is the way to go for that one. Um, 
so let's see. So then that would be uh, 0 to 1, and then 0 to pi over 2. And so that would be r dr d theta. OK, so now in this context, let's see. Um, I have a bit of a problem here, right? So what I did is I, I did um, x equals r cosine theta, z equals r sine theta. So my integral is allowed to have y's and r's and thetas in it, but no more x's and z's because uh, that's what we're parametrizing. And so if you go back here, you say, oh god, I've got x's and z's and x's and z's, oh my, this is a disaster. Well, no, that just means that, that, that we have to figure out what's going on with this before we go any further. And I, right now I've got it sort of halfway converted from Cartesian into polar, but, but not fully converted. So let's fix that. So let's see, so, um, well, x, what should x be? Well, it should be r cosine theta. And uh, let's see, so x squared plus z squared, that's going to be r squared. And then times 2 times z, and what was z? That was r sine theta. And then I have dy and then r dr d theta. And I guess it doesn't really help anybody to have that r off by itself. So let's get rid of it and make it join its brethren over inside the integrand like that. Okay, so <clears throat> there we go. Oh, and in fact, you know what? Look at that. There's there's more brethren. So I will um, combine that guy as well. And then we have a whole crowd of R's going on inside. And this should be straightforward to integrate. So let's see. So uh, I can't pull the, the theta integral out as, as a 2 pi because I've got functions of theta in the integrand. So it's going to have to stick around. No shortcuts, sadly, for you. Um, let's see, but I can integrate y pretty easily because it doesn't actually show up in the integrand. So that just means I'm going to get um, an r cosine theta coming out of there. And I've also got a sine theta coming out of there. Um, and then that's dr d theta. And now I can do the shortcut. At this point, it splits. So we have the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine theta sine theta. Or actually, let me write those in the other order just to be like totally type A about it. And I'll show you in a moment. There we go. So now if we do a u substitution, this one here is our du. All right, and then the other one is we've got our the fifth dr, and so that first integral uh, is going to become sine squared theta over two zero pi over two, and the other one is going to be r to the sixth over six zero to one. And putting that all together, uh, the first one ends up being one, and the second one ends up being one sixth. And so we get an answer of one-sixth for our moment.